Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're going to be talking about King Domino. Don't forget to stay tuned to the very end for our Pounds and Inches update. All right, so King Domino, this is a game where you're kind of drafting these tiles, the, well, the dominoes, yep. that have different kind of lands on them. You're trying to build your kingdom up, get the most amount of points possible. Uh, it's King Domino. Kingdom. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me show you what that looks like. And I might even show you an expansion. So here is King Domino. Uh, there's this giant stack of these, you know, these domino tiles, and we everyone starts with their own little tile and starting castle. So what you do is you're going to take four of the tiles off of that. You're going to set them up in order from highest to lowest and flip them over to see who goes first. Someone takes all the little meeples, they shuffle them up, and drop them in order. So in this case, the blue player is going to go first. Let's say they pick this tile right here, then pink picks this one, yellow goes up here, and green goes there. All right, so we drafted our tiles, but first, before we do, we go into the next step, we are going to set out the next level. I'm going to eat you, yum, yum, yum. All right, so starting with the lowest numbered tiles, which is going to be the ones at the top here, you are going to draft those pieces. You're going to put them in your spot. But at the same time, you're also going to choose what you want your next tile to be from the next row. So the yellow player is going to take this. They're going to put it over there in their castle. And then they might choose this one. The green player is going to do the same thing. They might choose this one. And we are the blue player, so we're going to pick this one. We're going to attach it to our board somehow, and then take whatever's left over, because we were in the last place. So when you are placing the dominoes in your castle, basically the dominoes have to be matching symbols in some way. So, like for instance, let's just pretend this one was here. We could place this here on the yellow. We could match it up doubly, which is probably really the best move there. Um, but you can also, all four sides of your central castle are wild, so you can place them, anything can go along there. So we would keep going, you know, we would draft these, these would all slide over, we would set out the next four, we'd line those up in order, and we would place the, the next tiles in our castle, and we would, you know, keep on drafting more and more. So every player is going to draft 12 tiles, and they're going to place them in their, in their kingdom, uh, and they're going to try to score as many as possible. The way the scoring works is, it's the amount of crowns multiplied by how many squares are touching that of the same symbol. So again, in this scenario, We've got one, two, three, four crowns. We've got two of those mines. So that would equal eight points. Everyone's going to end up with a five by five grid, but that center castle does not necessarily have to be in the center necessarily, although there is a variant where you get extra points if it is. And furthermore, you don't have to necessarily fill in every single spot in that five by five grid. If it's for some reason it was advantageous to move something, you know, over a little bit. That's not a good play. But if we did that, this, somehow this ended up being a corner that we couldn't fill in. Um, that's okay, you just don't get to draft that last final tile because it would not be able to fit. And there's also a variant uh, where you get points at the end of the game based off of being able to have a complete perfect 5x5 five five square with having no holes or weird stuff in it. So at the end of the game, you're going to count up every single region that you have, like for instance all of our yellows, all of our mines, all of our water. We're going to add them all up, multiply them by how many different crowns are in, are touching them. Uh, you might have two different sets of water, for instance, if they're not touching. You would multiply those by themselves. You know, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't add up all your water tiles together necessarily. You'd only add the ones that are all touching together and multiply them by the amount of crowns that are inside that one section. Whoever has the most points wins. Now we do have a couple of promos that we have that we thought were really fun. There's different little uh, stickers that you can put on your kings. And also there's these upgraded uh, castles as well. This one's a sand castle. This kind of dark poisony castle. This one, uh, that person knows how to let it go. So those are fun and they added a little extra element to the game. And speaking of extra elements of the game, there's also the print and play uh, expansion to this game that was just released called The Court. Um, there is a free print and play file that we want to show you now as well. All right, so when you're playing with The Court expansion, everything is set up pretty much the exact same way. We do have a little board here, which I'll explain in just a moment. And we have these extra resources here, which represents wheat, sheep, fish, and lumber. Um, but we do have some 
alternative uh, wooden pieces that might show up a little bit better on camera, so we're going to use those instead. And they look great. Alright, so wherever there is not a crown, you put a resource matching that, you know, that type. So for instance, wood's going to go on the, on the forests, there's going to be the wheat on the fields, fish are going to go in the water, and sheep are going to go in the pastures. So when you draft these tiles and you place them in your kingdom, you leave the resources on them. So it might look something like that. And then later on, you can spend those resources off of your kingdom in order to buy these tiles. There are three face-up tiles here. Uh, basically, they are upgraded versions of what you have on the board. So for instance, if we draft this little guy here, this actually adds a, a crown to a water spot, which makes it worth more points. Um, and what you do to buy these is you spend two resources that are non-equal. So for instance, a wheat and a lumber, a wheat and a fish, etc. In addition to upgraded, you know, land tiles, there's also people that you can draft. Um, the points for them are worth, on the bottom left, it says it's worth three points, but also he's worth three points for each fish that he's touching all the way around him. So if we put this here instead, right now he's worth six points, three points for himself, plus three points for touching that fish. Now, if you spend one of each resource, the wheat, the lumber, fish, and the sheep, you look at this whole stack here of tiles, and you can flip them over and choose any one of them you want. There's a ton of different options here, lots of different scoring opportunities. So we really enjoy the court expansion. It adds these cool bits, adds these really cool fun tiles, add extra scoring. It adds some fun decision-making to the game without really taking away from the simplicity of the game. So from that aspect, we really recommend it. If you already have King Domino, uh, this is a free expansion, free print-and-play file. Um, it just adds on to what's already an award-winning game. So check it out. I really like the turn order in this game and how it works out, how you can, how when you take your turns for that turn, that, that round, it sets you up for the turn order for the next round. It really reminded me of um, Vikings on Board with how the turn order yeah. just sets itself up and it kind of repeats on a loop. I really like how seamless that is. So this is a pretty short game, 10 to 15 minutes long. Yeah. What I'm looking for in a shorter game like that is for people around the table to be like, oh, that was fun, let's do it again. And that happens every time with King Domino. We've never played it just once, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I really like the artwork in this game, too. It's really cutesy, and um, there's a lot of Easter eggs in it. There's, like, the Loch Ness Monster in one of them. And then, um, so your kingdom, or your starting tile, you can actually get these little castles for it. And those little castles are adorable, and there's little things on there. And everybody's favorite frozen queen may be on one of them. <laughs> uh, the draft in this game is really clever and you only have four choices really but do you want to choose something that's going to benefit your own kingdom, your own setup or do you want to take away a tile from someone else that might benefit them even yeah. more so you have a lot of choices there, it's subtle but it's you know it's a lot of fun um, it's really nice of Blue Orange they sent out um, a print and play expansion for this game that yeah. we were able to play with and it was really fun and I really liked it but it was just nice for them to send that out and have it available for people especially right now well um, maybe people aren't getting as much gaming in as they'd like or um, aren't getting a lot of new games to have something fresh to something they probably already have. Yeah, so it's, I think it's called The Court, uh, and it is a lot of fun. Normally when you get these tiles that don't have the crowns on them for points, it's like, uh, okay, well, this is not a tile that does a whole lot for me. <laughs> maybe, hopefully, it'll connect with something, and I'll get yeah. some points out of it in the long run. But now you're actually getting resources, and you can use those resources to get these cool tiles that are going to get you even more points than what a crown would have gotten in the first place. It makes your choices a lot tougher now when you're drafting. Uh, so that's a really interesting part of this new expansion. We recommend that. We recommend this game as a whole. We've been having a lot of fun with it, especially yes. with this new print and play expansion. We recommend it. Uh, when it's like I said, super cool blue orange too to pump that oh, out yeah. and okay. make that available while we're all kind of uh, yeah. sheltering in place. So overall, I really, really liked this game. I thought it was a really fast game, but still very satisfying, even in that short amount of time. And I thought the expansion that we played, the print and play, added added to the game without adding to the game time, the game play. So that was really nice. Well, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to stay tuned to the very end for our pounds and inches update. You can also follow us, or you can subscribe to us on YouTube under Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews, and you can follow us on Facebook under Ryan and Bethany Board Game reviews. You can always chat with us on Twitter under Ryan and Bethany one, and you can follow us on Instagram under Ryan and Bethany. All right. Well, thanks so much for tuning in guys. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.
All right, well, thanks for staying tuned till the end for our Pounds and Inches segment. Um, this is where we talk about our health journey, what we're trying to do to be healthier people. Um, and so today I want to talk about yard work. <laughs> so just like in King Domino, where there are different kinds of landscapes, there is the, you know, the mines, and there's the grass, and the fields, and the pastures, all that kind of stuff. Our yard is a lot like that. <laughs> for as small as it is, there's a lot of hills and just like weird muddy spots and just all kinds of crazy stuff. I hate mowing our yard. I hate doing yard work. But what it's doing for me lately um, is it's allowing me to be outside, get some fresh air, and it's giving me the chance to move my legs around. I've been getting a lot of steps lately by doing this yard work, um, and my daughters are out there having fun with me, and it's just... They're his cheerleaders. <laughs> Whenever they see him mowing and they pass the, the swing set, they go, Go, Daddy! Go, Daddy! <laughs> it's very encouraging. Um, see, I know that's not, it's no replacement for, for a real workout, some true cardio, but it's still kind of tricking my mind a little bit to get me in the more in the mood, more in the desire to make healthier choices, you know, knowing that get out there and move your legs. And, you know, if you were exercised more and walked more and, you know, going for jogs, then when you do yard work next week, it's not going to hurt your body as much and all those kinds of things. So, um, yeah, I suggest, uh, yeah, get out there, do your yard work while, you're, while we have the chance right now. Uh, enjoy it and uh, burn some calories along the way. And that's what I've been doing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for staying tuned to our pounds and inches update. We will see you later. Bye, Bye guys.